Hi guys. Well, it has just turned into a cloudy, gloomy yuck, but at least warm midwinter day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is now Friday, Friday, January 22nd, 2021, here in this undisclosed swamp on the planet, and I need to head out to meditate for the next few hours uh, but before I go uh, become become one with nature uh, do what I always do here at Collapse Chronicles and oh yes I am Sam Mitchell this is Collapse Chronicles and since it is Friday January 22nd it is time for me to do what I try to do every Friday and that is bring you my ecological meltdown roundup rant where we check in with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mangabay.com for uh, their weekly laundry list of uh, their just depressing slog across this collapsing planet. And, you know, guys, I, I've been doing this rant every week for years, and uh, and it's kind of like every time I start this rant, it's like I feel like I need to... To, you know, put on some rubber hip waders and uh, get a big shovel. I, I feel like I'm just wading into this, I don't know, overflowing septic tank. Uh, but anyway, where are we going to start our slog through the overflowing septic tank of this planet? <clears throat> Instead of Brazil, we're going to start in uh, one of the other most beautiful, as yet, uh, undisturbed paradises on the planet. That's New Guinea. I, are you like me? Are you a little irritated that they changed New Guinea's name to Papua? And I don't know if it's Papua, Papua, Papua. Anyway, we know where we're talking about. I call it New Guinea. Uh, wherever you want to call it. Uh, tribe moves to block clearing of its ancestral forest for palm oil. Wow, we have never heard this story before on mangabay.com. This is a poster child mangabay uh, snapshot of the collapse. <clears throat> Members of the Oyu tribe of Papua, Indonesia, are demanding a halt to the operations of palm oil company PT Indo Asiana Lestari, which appears to be gearing up to clear their ancestral forest. Yes, they say that the company failed to obtain the community's consent for the project and that it's not even clear whether it even has the requisite permits to begin operations. Yes, IAL's concession is part of the Tanamara Mega Project, meaning palm oil mega project, that is already dogged by allegations that key operating permits have been falsified. Yes. The Papua region is home to the world's third largest remaining contiguous swath of tropical rainforest after the Amazon and the Congo Basin, but large areas, large areas of the world's third largest continuous swath of tropical forest may be cleared, may be cleared for oil palm plantations. Do you think so? Okay, let's go over from palm oil to the pet trade. <clears throat> pet trade relies on, quote, disposable wild chameleons from Madagascar. Despite being difficult to keep alive and healthy, Chameleons are among the most popular reptiles in the exotic pet trade. Each year, hundreds of thousands of these slow-moving reptiles are taken from the wild, both illegally and legally. 
<clears throat> many of them from threatened species living in the forests of Madagascar. Yes, do you think so? Say goodbye. I can't believe there's any chameleons still living uh, in Madagascar. So let's go over there to Argentina, where I, you know, this kind of story uh, <laughs> has always kind of piqued my jauntist worldview, talking about uh, where conservationists recently released three jaguars into Gran Abera Park in northeastern Argentina in an attempt to rewild the local ecosystem, jaguars have not been present in the Ibera wetlands for the past 70 years after hunting and habitat loss drove them to, to extinction. Uh, so here we go again. Uh, they let these three jaguars out in this protected area where every jaguar has already been gunned down years ago. You know, this reminds me of, of when I was working for this Scarlet McCall uh, rewilding program in Costa Rica a few years ago. I spent three months down there, and we, uh, we released eight scarlet macaws rewilded them back into uh you know the jungle where they used to live and within one week i had to my visa ran out so within the first week of releasing these eight scarlet macaws four of them had been shot uh by uh local clueless morons in the first week Four out of eight, uh, and this is exactly what is going to happen to these jaguars. I'm assuming all eight of the eight <coughs> eventually got shot, but I didn't have the stomach to find out. But anyway, moving along, yes, we're going to go over uh, to the Balkans. Yes, looking at the military takeover of the Balkans' largest mountain pasture. <clears throat> a 2019 decree by the government of Montenegro sets forth the country's intention to set up a military training ground <coughs> in the highland grasslands of Sinjavina in the northern part of the country. <clears throat> yes, uh... Scientists and activists say <coughs> an incursion by the military would destroy livelihoods, biodiversity, and vital ecosystems services. Yes. You think so? The military taking over its own country. Okay, from the Balkans Highlands to the, uh, we're, we're gonna, that, that, that one gets too complicated, too good. Anyway, let's just go over, oh, so the chameleon story uh, is also, you know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, so each week they uh, publish a video over there on their channel, and this week they are looking at the illegal chameleon pet trade from Madagascar. So if you want to find out more how the chameleons of Madagascar are, are utterly doomed, go over there and check out uh, Rhett's YouTube channel. Okay. Nigeria has two honors, I guess, here. Uh, Nigeria emerges as Africa's primary export hub for ivory and pangolin scales. Yes. Uh, so, 
you know, so they, they've really cracked down on all, all of this crap in East Africa. So thanks to uh, the, the cops actually uh, succeeding in, in getting and nabbing a couple of these guys, the wildlife smuggling trade in Africa has now moved westward to Nigeria. Yes, since 1914, Nigeria and, in second place, the Democratic Republic of the Congo have taken over Tanzania in Kenya uh, to make Nigeria the number one export hub for both elephant ivory and pangolin scales, probably rhino horn too. Uh, corruption at the ports, the involvement of influential politicians in the country, and rural poverty make Nigeria an attractive waypoint for wildlife smugglers. Yes, do you think so? Uh... Okay, we're going to skip over the C word today. All right, what's going on with environmental assassinations? Environmental assassinations are bad for business, new research shows. Well, they've been pretty good for business for the past, well, at least 500 years. Uh, environmental assassinations ha have been uh, one of the major, uh, you know, it's right out of the global corporatocracy playbook. Uh, but I guess uh, maybe environ actually literally putting bullets through environmentalist heads doesn't look good to the, uh, you know, to those greenwashing PR flags. After years of research, economics experts, experts say they can prove, yes, that financial markets respond swiftly and definitively when multinationals are publicly named in connection with the assassination of an environmental defender. The researchers analyzed 354 assassinations over the past two decades connected to mining and extractive mineral projects around the world, uh, noting particularly significant violent action in the Philippines and Peru. Once a company is named, the data show that within 10 days the markets respond, hitting the company with a median loss in market capitalization of more than $100 million. Yes, $100 million to shoot that uh, environmental uh, defender. Let's see, let's go look at illegal logging in Romania. Good Lord. Romania's rich and ancient forests are in peril. <clears throat> Since joining the European Union in 2007, the country has seen its forest cover depleted at record levels. Rangers and environmentalists who investigate and document these crimes face violence intimidation, and even murder from agents of an extensive criminal network that supplies multinational corporations with timber. I guess these uh, hired guns did not read that latest report. Uh, there you go. That's the report from Romania. Let's go back to Indonesia. Uh, I don't know if you've been uh, keeping track of, the, of these killer floods going on in Indonesia. Palm oil plantations and coal mines linked to deadly Indonesia flood. 
environmentalists have attributed recent heavy flooding in southern Indonesian Borneo to widespread deforestation for oil palm plantations and coal mines. An analysis by Indonesia's own space agency shows an area of forest twice the size of London was cleared in the past decade in the watershed area of the Barito River. Yes, during that same period, plantations spanning twice the size of Los Angeles have been established in the watershed area. And you can see what that means today. Uh, okay. Would you believe that problems persist in Mozambique's fisheries. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't even need to insult your intelligence any further with explaining why problems persist in Mozambique's fisheries. Yes. Uh, okay, I guess this is just anywhere on the planet deforestation. <clears throat> With fires and deforestation driving land use change around the world, uh, manga, oh, this is an interview with a bunch of these people. Uh, the <clears throat> interview focuses primarily on how the palm oil industry drives deforestation in Indonesia and how NGOs can help reduce their impact. Yes, okay. I think we heard this same story out of Colombia last week. So uh, we're going to go down to Peru. We're going to step down from Colombia to Peru to pretty much repeat verbatim a story from last week where in Peru we find indigenous threatened by land grabbing and the drug trade. Yes, uh, we're looking uh, kind of right along the western edge of the Amazon basin, you know where the Andes uh, become the Amazon, where we find increasing numbers of outsiders are invading the territory and deforesting large swaths of indigenous land, largely to grow coca, which is used to make cocaine. Residents report they are often subject to intimidation, threats, and even murder attempts if they speak out about these incursions. Yes, and you will not believe we do have a, a C-word link already under monitor due to their remoteness. These areas have gotten even less government attention during the corona panic due to movement restrictions put in place to reduce the infection rate, meaning movement restrictions for, uh, you, you know, cops. The robbers, the land grabbers, seem to have no movement restrictions. Land grabbers all over the planet are taking full advantage of the corona panic to expand and hasten their movement. I guess uh, land grabbers are immune to the corona panic. Uh, let's see. Do we have an election in Brazil shaping up again? Wow. This is, uh, this is what we get to look forward to in the next Brazilian round of elections. Brazil elections boost environmental violators to high offices in the Amazon. 51 
of the candidates uh, were sitting office holders, blah, blah, blah. Many of the candidates are former illegal loggers and ranchers and continue to hold a stake in agribusiness companies operating on deforested land. Yes, in addition to the environmental violations, some of the candidates are implicated in other serious crimes, including one accused of using slave labor on his farm and another one who owns a ranch where 1,285 pounds of cocaine were confiscated by police. Uh, anyway, okay, let's look up, uh, let's look at our ecological Ponzi scheme. Oh, this is Manga Bay's coverage of the our ghastly future. Humanity's ecological Ponzi scheme sets up a bleak future, scientists warn. In a recently published perspective piece, 17 leading scientists say the world is facing a ghastly future due to ongoing environmental degradation, including biodiversity loss, climate change, and human overpopulation and overconsumption. The authors say their message is meant to give a cold shower to leaders. Yes, I bet. Uh, okay. Anyway. Uh, guys, I could go on with this. But uh, I really want to get a walk-in with the little dog and get out there and enjoy my public lands while I still can. And it uh, looks like rain moving in. So uh, I'm just going to cut it off here since I realize I've been talking to myself for the last 10 minutes anyway. So uh, if you did enjoy uh, Mon Rhett Butler and Manga Bay's latest roundup of assaults against our planet uh please send Rhett some love by liking this video and always do feel free to uh subscribe to collapse chronicles i notice i have lost more subscribers uh in the first month of 2021 than i have in any one month period since, oh, probably April of last year. I cannot imagine why Collapse Chronicles would have lost more <clears throat> subscribers since New Year's Eve than in any other one-month period in this channel's history. If anyone has an answer to that mystery, let me know. And with that, I am going to head off and enjoy my public lands while I still can, and I encourage you to do the same. Bye, guys.